Hello, I'm Evan Brand, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner and Board Certified Holistic Nutritionist, talking with you today about reversing acne. Now, I may have some old pictures of myself with acne. If I do, I'll pop one up on the screen, but I dealt with acne for a long time, five, 10 years possibly, throughout my teenage years going into college. It was a big deal. It was tough to get rid of. I had IBS issues that you probably heard me talk about in other videos. There's a huge link to the gut when it comes to skin issues. And so we're gonna talk about that today and how you can reverse it. And you don't need drugs. You don't need crazy surgery procedures, lasers, over-the-counter medications. It's just unnecessary in most cases. So we'll talk about a lot of the solutions that I've implemented on myself to fix myself first and foremost, and then also it's an issue that I work on with my clients all the time, ranging from age 12 to age 70. You know, there's adults, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s that still develop acne. That's usually just because there's some underlying issue that just hasn't been identified and addressed yet. One's gonna be the microbiome. So I talked about the gut. Anything that's off in the microbiome, so this could be yeast, parasites, bacteria, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, dysbiosis, which is a fancy word for an imbalance of your bad flora and good flora. All of these things can contribute to skin issues. So if you've got bacterial overgrowth, and if you have IBS, you've got constipation, you've got diarrhea, you've got bloating, you've got gas, you've got heartburn, indigestion, there's likely some issue with the microbiome. So you need to look into further testing via stool testing to identify what's going on. Until you fix the gut issues, I don't care how much cream and magic potions you put on your skin, you're likely not going to fix the skin issue. This is something you have to heal internally before you can heal externally. Huge deal for me, I have multiple parasites. That was the root cause of my issue. Uh, number two is gonna be insulin and sugar. So this is pretty low hanging fruit, but if you've got a diet that's consisting of sodas, even if you're thinking you're eating and drinking healthy by drinking green juices like naked juice, it's crap. It's non-organic and it's loaded with tons of sugar. Sugar is going to increase insulin. Insulin is going to do all sorts of things to your metabolic health, but it's also going to affect your skin. So until the diet is removed and the diet is free of sugar, the diet is free of refined sugars, especially in the sodas and wherever else they're at, popsicles, ice cream, you know the sources of sugar. Um, refined carbohydrates too, that can be a big issue. Grains and gluten, this is another big one for me. I took out gluten from my diet. I went on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet. I still had acne. I then found out I had gut issues. I addressed those. Then I had to remove grains completely. So I had to even remove rice and go on what's considered an autoimmune paleo protocol to really address my skin issues. Now, occasionally if I'll add in a little bit of rice or a little bit of organic blue corn, I may still have some type of flare up on my skin. So it's, it's really just a battle. Is it worth it? Is it worth paying the price to have those foods? Number four is stress. This is an easy one. Cortisol. It's going to damage the gut barrier. If you're stressed out and you're increasing your stress hormone cortisol, you're tearing apart these tight junctions in the gut. Now you've got undigested food particles getting into the bloodstream, which once again are going to disrupt this whole microbiome cycle. You're going to create internal inflammation, which is therefore going to affect your skin. So if you don't get stress under control, this includes going to bed on time, getting plenty of good sleep, going to bed 10 p.m. or so, unless you work third or swing shift, you've got to get to bed by 10. Those hours before midnight really count as double in terms of restoring and stabilizing your hormones, which moves us right into this, hormones. Stress is tied in, absolutely tied into hormones. Cortisol, noradrenaline, epinephrine, all of your different neurotransmitters, your hormones, these are all interacted and these are all affected by stress. Hormonal imbalances can also be due to sugar. Uh, PCOS, which is something that a lot of my female clients deal with, that's a hormonal imbalance that a lot of times has a root in sugar. And so we've really got to look at hormones, make sure those are okay. Lastly, dairy. I've already hit on dairy. You've got to remove it from the diet. Even if it's organic, grass-fed, local, raw dairy, it doesn't matter. It's got to go for at least 30 days, resolve all these other issues, get the skin clear, and then maybe you can add things back in like a good raw local butter or even just an organic grass-fed butter. Maybe you can add stuff back in. Maybe you can add in ghee, which is a clarified butter, and be okay. But your raw organic cheese, it still could potentially cause the acne issue. So if you really wanna to get to the root of it, dial all these things in and then you're gonna be in a good place. Now in terms of solutions, a lot of this, this is really, 
I already outlined a lot of the solutions, but here's some extra supplements that I use clinically to help people. One's going to be vitamin B5. Now, B5, pantothenic acid, it's great for adrenal health. Let me get my water. B5 is great for adrenal health, energy, but it's also great for helping to speed up the rate of repair with the skin. Uh, it's commonly depleted. I wrote that just because so many people are deficient in B5 due to stress. You kind of burn up your B vitamins like jet fuel, like an afterburner on an F-16 fighter jet. You just burn through the B vitamins like no other when you're stressed out. Number two is going to be carnitine. Uh, typically, I'm using acetyl-L-carnitine, which is really helpful for people with brain fog, cognitive dysfunction, but carnitine's got a really cool anti-inflammatory effect too, which is why I use it for anybody with acne. And honestly, I found this as an accident. I started using carnitine for people that had candida overgrowth. They had brain fog, and they said all of a sudden my skin's getting cleared up, probably part of the microbiome, but then I started looking into carnitine, and there's research on carnitine acting on the skin. So that's cool. Uh, next, we got zinc. Zinc is necessary, as I wrote here, for hydrochloric acid production. So if you're stressed out, you're eating grains and gluten, you're eating sugar, you've got insulin problems, you've got issues with your microbiome, we know that your hydrochloric acid production in your gut, which is helpful for breaking down your food, we know that that's going to be impaired. You have to have zinc for HCL. Now, if you optimize your digestion, you might not need to supplement with zinc if you're getting good pastured meats and you are digesting well, you're going to get some naturally occurring zinc. For some period of time though, you may need to actually use supplemental zinc. Next, we've got vitamin A. One of the most common treatments for skin issues is a super high dose vitamin A and even some prescription drugs for skin issues can be a modified version of a vitamin A. So this is great. It's just an antioxidant. We know that vitamin D is important for so much. That's really a hormone that got named a vitamin, but it's great for the immune function. So I always have to have vitamin D on board. If you can use the sunshine as your vitamin D source, that's great. The more skin exposure without burning, the better. Uh, but for those people in the upper latitudes or in the winter time, it's gonna be tough to optimize vitamin D without oral supplementation unless you live at a pretty southern latitude. Next, we've got chromium, one of my favorite, favorite nutrients of all time. Chromium is going to help stabilize blood sugar. Remember, any issues with blood sugar, if your blood sugar is crashing and rising, and crashing and rising, you've got blood sugar imbalance, it's gonna to be tough to have optimal skin. So blood sugar balance, blood sugar stabilization is what I wrote. And then lastly, adaptogenic herbs, my favorite. I have to talk about adaptogens. You've got rhodiola, ashwagandha, Siberian ginseng, which is also known as eleuthero. You've got reishi mushroom. There's all sorts of different adaptogens out there that really help to modulate this stress response. So I can't wave a magic wand and say, hey Sally or Joe or John, look, I've waved a wand, all your stress is gone. I can't do that. But what I can do is give you a protocol that includes adaptogenic herbs, and that's gonna help modulate the way that your nervous system perceives the stress. So even if you've got the same amount of stress coming at you, you've still got all this stuff on your plate, the adaptogens are gonna to help to regulate that response. Therefore, you're not going to get into that fight or flight mode. You're not gonna get into panic. You're not gonna get overwhelmed and irritable and cranky and hangry. You're not gonna have all these bad symptoms that come from being stressed. It's gonna help you to modulate that. Now, do you still need to go to bed on time? Do you still need to address stress? Do you still need to get negative people out of your life? Absolutely. However, adaptogens can be the support that you need to help that process work a little bit better and help you to reverse acne. This is Ev Brand signing out. If you'd like to schedule a functional medicine call with me to discuss your health symptoms, your health goals, just click on screen here. I love to chat with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.